Um, so now we're going to pick up in this afternoon with a couple of keynotes and a panel. And the first keynote is, with, is by Yakov Bart, who is faculty director at the DATA Initiative. And DATA stands for Digital Analytics, Technology, and Automation. He is a core faculty member here at the AI Institute and is an associate professor of marketing and a Thomas E. Moore faculty fellow at the business school here. Uh, he has co-authored a popular digital textbook on social media marketing, Principle and Strategies, and a playbook on digital transformation entitled Break the Wall, Why and How to Democratize Digital in Your Business, published as part of an AMA, American Marketing Association, book series. Please welcome Yaka. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving me this wonderful opportunity to speak here today. Um, we're opening, indeed, the second half of our day here. And what I'd like to introduce it to the framework. So I'm not going to give you case studies. I'm not going to give you tangible examples. But I'm going to give you a framework that I hope you will find useful. So of course, we all know that digital technologies, analytics dramatically changed how consumers go from day to day and how consumers interact with you. Interact with you anytime they search for information relevant to the decision, when they evaluate products and services, when they actually make purchases, and finally, in the post-purchase stage, when they share experiences. Technology is always involved. And so, of course, many of you are familiar with the idea of customer journey. So this is just one illustration of customer journey. Consumers can go through multiple stages, starting from awareness into considerations, purchase, and then getting potentially some service relating to purchasing products and services. And then they may become loyal members as well. And as they move through that customer journey, they interact with companies both in offline and in digital spaces. And of course, it's no secret that the number of digital touch points has been dramatically increasing over the last decade, over the last couple of decades, I would even say. Um, and it's even going to get uh, more so. From digital assistants to multiple Internet of Things devices, there's going to be more and more things through which consumers will be digitally interacting with brands, with platforms. Some estimates show that the number of Internet of Things devices worldwide is going to grow to 29 billion um, in seven years. And half of these devices, roughly, is going to be consumer facing. And so the question here is well, how can we try to make sense of it? And the idea that I'd like to introduce today is digital signals. So anytime customers interact through digital touch point with a company, there's some digital signal potentially getting left that indicates some interest of that consumer in the product and service, some preference indicates some past activity that could be leveraged by a company to better target ads, to better recommend products and services. And so the signals come from a lot of everyday behaviors. These indicators of interest preferences and activities, it's hard to quantify them, how many potential signals average consumer leaves every day, but it's most likely in hundreds. And so we know that firms trying, of course, to collect as many digital signals as possible in order to better target, better provide recommendations. But of course, it's based on the internal capabilities to analyze the data that could be harvested from these digital signals left by consumers. Now, importantly, the signals can be overtly or covertly acquired by firms. Many conversations I'm sure you had in breaks, one of my conversations before this keynote was covering an example where company has been collecting these digital signals without consumer realizing. And when consumers receive this personalized recommendation or personalized targeted ad, 
consumer may potentially react negatively. And so consumers also vary in how much they wear, how much they know about what happens with digital signals that happens as a result of interaction with digital devices. So how firms interpret and act on the signals may affect how consumers react. One example you've seen, I'm sure, you know, this device, everyone's been talking about it for the last few weeks, the AI pin. Um, it's a new miracle device that's been at least definitely marketed as a new iPhone, pretty much, right? But the key thing is that some consumers may not be aware is the last line, that it has camera sensors and built-in speakers, and so it dramatically increases the universe of digital signals that any consumer adopting this device would be potentially sharing with that platform, and that platform could be sharing it with many other companies. Many consumers may not be aware of that. And so from the consumer perspective, how they look at the digital signals is first the awareness of signal emission um, may potentially vary. So consumers express concerns about how this data is used, uh, but most consumers actually have no awareness of how exactly the digital signals are collected, how exactly this digital signals then used by um, companies. Of course, uh, there are privacy concerns that many consumers have, and there's some research showing that these privacy concerns decrease when consumers believe they have control over their privacy. And the key word here is believe, of course. The illusion of control is an important construct that often tells us what consumers think they know, even though in reality they may not have as much control as they believe. And so consumers may have trouble making actually fully informed decision about privacy due to this disconnect, due to this asymmetries. They have much less information about what happens with these digital signals and companies. Um, and so there's always privacy personalization trade-off that consumers are deciding. Consumers constantly performing the privacy calculus in the head when they're weighing risk associated with sacrificing privacy against various benefits associated with convenience, uh, personalizations, and other. Of course, um, the level of granularity may vary. Um, at the most detailed level, the signals produced by consumers can enable firm to attribute behavior to a specific person. At the other extreme, of course, signals can be aggregated across groups of consumers, right? So when you're talking about uh, geo-targeting, you may have some idea about the number of people getting into um, geo-fenced locations, but you may not um, you may not have access to each consumer who happened to be in a particular location. In online space, we see the same uh, picture. And of course, a lot of regulation um, potentially trying to alleviate these privacy concerns, and the big tech is trying to push back. I'm sure you've all heard about Google's efforts to try to continue getting these important digital signals while at the same time reducing granularity by applying the concept of cohorts. Now we're branded at Topics API, but it's basically the same idea of cohorts. Um, another important concept here is visibility of consumer journals through the signals. Signals could be publicly observable to everybody. They could be privately observable only to um, certain firms, or it could be completely anonymous. And all of these three different types of signal visibility could occur at different stages of customer journey. It could happen pre-purchase, at the purchase, and of course, post-purchase as well. And so the key challenge in managing consumer relationship in this new reality where digital signals constantly getting harvested could be illustrated by this two by two table. One is that different consumers may have low or high tendency to emit public signals, and firms may want to focus on acquiring prospects versus uh, retaining existing customers. So what I mean here is that you can imagine a consumer giving some signal, posting a product review, for one of the companies. A competitor may observe that signal, 
this is a very simple example, just for illustration purposes. A competitor may observe that signal, the product review in which consumer complains about experience with some other company and says, well, maybe we can poach that consumer. We can leverage the availability of this digital signal. And so the company may make targeted approach. What's important to understand here, and what's often gets emitted in the discussion is that the fact is that a consumer already allows to be an easily discovered through publicly available digital signal may actually indicate that customer lifetime value of that customer may not be as high. Because if you can easily leverage this digital signal to poach that customer, then down the line, it's probably easier for your competitors to poach that customer away from you in the future. And so it's important to take it into strategic consideration when deciding, are you actually gonna go and try to poach any consumer that looks poachable? Or you may wanna think a little bit more strategically about this. And I hope these considerations would be helpful for you. So I'm gonna leave you with this uh, quite extensive framework that of course, I don't have time to go into detail in this um, keynote, but essentially we provide a roadmap how in your business, you can think through consumers making decisions about emitting digital signals, then the firms deciding what to do about these digital signals, and consumer reaction to firm actions driven by acquisition or not of digital signals. And all of this happens continuously through multiple stages of consumer journey. If you are um, interested to know more, um, Happy to chat in one of the breaks and more details available in the paper we published last year at the Journal of Academy of Martin Science. Tens of thousand people already access the paper um, and I hope um, you will also find it useful for your purposes. Thank you so much.